G'day guys, in today's video we're going to be showing you how to do an automatic transmission fluid drain and fill in this 80 series Land Cruiser. This one's got the A442F 4 speed auto which you can find in the petrol and turbo diesel 80s as well as some 105 series models. Now before we get started it's a good idea to check your firewall plate which you can find at the back of the engine bay. There's a transmission code on there which you can use to confirm which transmission came in your car. So let's jump right in. We'll quickly run through all the tools and parts we need to do the job, but as always there'll be a full list along with timestamps if you'd like to skip ahead in the description below. We've got a drain pan with a minimum capacity of 6 litres and a couple of empty oil cans for disposing of our old transmission fluid. We've got a metric socket set with a 24mm socket and a torque wrench that's accurate for 20 foot-pounds or 27 newton metres. You'll need a new drain plug gasket, there's the part number from Toyota. For the transmission fluid itself, we need up to 6 litres of a Dextron 2 or Dextron 3. In this case, we've gone for two 4 litre cans of a Castrol ATF Dex 3 fluid. You need a funnel with a nice thin end on it, in this case up to about 12 millimetres or half inch wide to fit into the end of the fill tube. We've got a flathead screwdriver, some paper towel and degreaser for cleaning up any mess, and some nitrile gloves and safety glasses for protection. As always, make sure you chock your wheels before you jump underneath the car. Before we start draining that automatic transmission fluid, it's important to check the current level, and that's because when we do a drain and fill, we're only going to be getting about 6 litres out of the total 15 litre system capacity out of the transmission. For example, there'll still be a fair bit stuck in the torque converter. As part of this process, we're going to be measuring how much we take out so that we can put the same amount back in, and that's why we need to check first whether it was currently overfilled or underfilled so that we can account for that in how much we put back in. The transmission dipstick is located just down here on the left hand side of the engine. In this case with the petrol engine, it's just behind and below the engine oil dipstick here. Now before we dip that though, it's important that we run through a quick sequence which we'll show you now. We need to do this when we've just driven the car, so the engine and transmission are at normal operating temperature. You want to park on a flat level surface with the engine idling and the parking brake on. We're going to put our foot on the brake and move the shifter from P down through all the positions to L. and then back up to P again. And then we're ready to dip our automatic transmission fluid. So grab yourself some clean paper towel or a rag. We're gonna pull that dipstick out and wipe it off and put it back in. Then we'll pull it back out again and we can check the level. Now there's two different levels on here. You've got cold down here and hot up here. We want to be checking the hot level and making sure it falls between the two markings, which it does, so I'm happy with that. So we'll pop that back in and then we can get started on draining that oil. So we've switched the car off and jumped underneath. Your transmission drain pan and drain plug are located just here, in about the center line of the car, behind the engine, and just in front of this cross member. So grab your 24 mil socket on your socket wrench, and we're just gonna crack that drain plug. And then you just wanna start to loosen it until it's finger tight. Then you wanna take your drain pan, we're gonna put that underneath and remove that drain plug to drain the oil. Now make sure you get your hand out of the way nice and quick because the oil is going to be warm. This is a great opportunity to inspect your oil while it's draining. It should look clear and nice bright pink or red color. If it looks a bit darker like a brown color and it starts to smell a little bit burnt, that can be a sign that your transmission's overheated. It's important that we remove the old crush gasket. In this case, it stayed stuck onto the plug, but sometimes you might find it sticks to the bottom of the drain pan as well. And that's where your flathead screwdriver comes in handy. So we're just gonna remove that old gasket. You can throw that away because we're going to replace it with a new one. You'll notice that on the end of this drain plug, there's a magnetic tip and that's going to pick up any metallic fragments floating around in the oil. So you want to inspect this and see if there's any larger chunks of metal stuck on here, which can be a sign of wear in your transmission. In this case though, it's not looking bad at all. So I'm just going to clean that plug up before we put it back in. You'll need to leave this for quite a while to allow the automatic transmission fluid to drain. Now that's had a good chance to drain, we're going to hit it with some paper towel or some rags to wipe up the mess. This is where it helps to use a little bit of degreaser as well. Once that's nice and clean, you wanna grab your cleaned up drain plug with your new crush gasket, and we're gonna thread that in by hand. 
Then we're going to take our 24 mil socket on the torque wrench and tighten this one to 20 foot pounds, which is 27 Newton meters. So we're going to pour our waste ATF into our old oil cans now and measure how much we've taken out. So you want to use the increments on the side of the can to do that. So I filled that up exactly to the four litre line. And then I can continue on with the next bottle. So I can see there now that I've got about five and a half litres between these two bottles that we've drained. So I'm going to put that much back in. In terms of disposing of your waste oil, you can typically put it into these containers and take it to your local auto parts store where they'll dispose of it for you. So now we're ready to fill up our ATF to replace that fluid that we've taken out. And the way that we do that is through the dipstick hole. So we're gonna take out the dipstick and wipe it off and put it off to the side. And then you wanna grab your funnel with the nice thin end on it. Again, as long as it's less than about half inch or 12 mil, it's gonna fit into the end of that dipstick hole there. So we'll pop that in. So you can pour it straight into there. I find it works quite well though to add a second slightly larger mouthed funnel in there to give you more room to pour into. Then I'm going to grab the first of my two 4 litre ATFs. And I'm going to add that in. You don't want to pour too quickly because it's quite a small mouth on the opening to the fill hole. If you pour too fast, you'll get it flowing back up and out of the funnel. You'll notice that I'm pouring with the oil can on the side and that's because it prevents glugging. You get a nice smooth flow. All right, and then I can move on to the second can. So I'm gonna be adding in another 1.5 liters to bring my total up to the 5.5 liters, which I drained. But this is where if you dip the oil beforehand and found that it was either under or overfilled, you wanna adjust this amount accordingly. Make sure you're stopping and checking fairly regularly while you do this so that you don't overfill it. So I'm happy now that I've put back in the same amount that I took out. So I'm gonna take those funnels out and clean them up. Then make sure your dipstick's nice and clean and we're going to reinstate that as well. So now we need to check the level to confirm that we've added the right amount. And the way that we do that is following the same process as we did before. The only difference being that because we've let the car sit for quite a while now and then we've just added some room temperature fluid, when we run the car and dip the oil, we need to be looking at the two cold markings rather than the hot markings that we looked at before. So we're going to run the engine for a couple of minutes and then dip it now. So I've run the gear shifter through that same sequence and I'm ready to check the level. And I can see that's where I want it to be between the two cold levels. So job done. You should dip it like that when it's cold straight after you do the oil change. But best practice is to dip it again when the engine and transmission are up to operating temperature and make sure it's in that hot range. That's it for today guys, so thanks for watching. Changing those driveline oils is a really easy way of making sure you maintain your vehicle in the long term. So you may want to consider checking out our other videos on the transfer case and front and rear differential oil changes as well. We do read all your comments, so if you've got any feedback for us or something you'd like to see in a future video, please let us know down below. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one.